going on, guys? It is the Coaster Battleman here, bringing you 10 roller coasters that were massive failures. And a good amount of these coasters only operated for about a decade at the most. Most of them, some of them didn't even last five seasons with the park that they operated at. Let's get started with the list. Number 10 is Goliath, and this coaster is at Six Flags New England. It's a Vicoma giant inverted boomerang that operated from 2012 to 2020. And who knows if it will reopen after 2020 as it closed temporarily. But this ride, it's mainly because of the premier rides, trains, that this coaster was, is just awful. At Magic Mountain, it had the traditional Vekoma trains, and it was a pretty solid ride, but now it is a disaster. With the premier rides trains, this coaster is very rough and not the same, and not the ride it once was. Next at number 9 is Shockwave. This operated from 1988 through 2002 at Six Flags Great America, and was replaced by the much smoother and much better Superman Ultimate Flight. And Shockwave had so many issues. It had unfortunate stress on the track as the train went through several of the inversions. And the trains and the wheels on the trains wore out very, very quickly and needed to be replaced quite often. Tons of liability issues with this coaster, and it didn't help that this coaster was unbearably rough, even though it was the first coaster to go upside down seven times, and the layout was excellent on this coaster, especially at the time. Even today, this is a pretty decent layout. But poor execution from aerodynamics led to the downfall of this coaster, and it's pretty unfortunate to see a massive ride like this not last even 15 years. Number 8 is Draken Fire, and this coaster operated at Busch Gardens Williamsburg from 1992 through 1998. And this is one of those classic coasters that a lot of people bring up as some of the biggest roller coaster failures of all time. And this coaster, Aerodynamics, was trying to replicate Bulliger and Mavillard as Bulliger and Mavillard canceled the project and they didn't want to build Dragon Fire for Bush Gardens Williamsburg. So Aerodynamics decided, or Bush Gardens decided, Aerodynamics would build it instead, and it turned out to be an epic disaster. Bulger and Mabillard, they went on the next year to build Kumba, and that ride is still operating, and it's one of my favorite roller coasters ever. And Rock and Fire only lasted for about seven seasons at Busch Gardens Williamsburg before being completely scrapped in 2002. This coaster had a really unique and cool layout, but really poor track profiling, and it was unbearably rough. And Aerodynamics, they didn't really have the right track style to have these modern style inversions. 
versions like Bulger and Mabillard. Seventh is Z Force slash Flashback. This coaster operated from 1985 through 2003, and unfortunately, this coaster never really had too many issues until it went to Six Flags Magic Mountain before it became this unbearably rough coaster. At Great America and over Georgia, it was a decent ride, but at Magic Mountain, this is where the coaster significantly declined in popularity and in ride quality, especially with the over-the-shoulder restraints it had. And overall, this coaster isn't the best. Layout-wise, and the execution wasn't the greatest. Number six is a Togo roller coaster that operated at Six Flags Great Adventure, named Viper, and this operated from 1995 through 2004. And this coaster was plagued with tons of issues, including tons of downtime, and the trains also put tons of stress on the track, which is a really big problem for roller coasters, and elements would have to be removed, not in really this case, but in some of the cases coming up, but this coaster was a total disaster for Great Adventure, and Togo, known for pretty poor roller coasters in the U.S., this was another one of those poor, poorly made coasters. Next on the list is Sun Beast at King's Island. And this is the most famous disaster roller coaster, one of the biggest roller coaster fails of all time, only lasting the, throughout the entire 2000s decade, and only about a little over half of that with the massive vertical loop that it had. And unfortunately, this coaster, despite its awesome stats and speed, had a mediocre layout, poor track profiling, and lots of downtime. Next is the OG Bat, another King's Island coaster, and it this was the biggest King's Island disaster roller coaster of all time and it only operated from 1981 through 1983 and it didn't last all that long. It was the first aerodynamics suspended coaster and aero really did perfect the suspended coaster with later models such as Iron Dragon at Cedar Park Point and Vortex at Canada's Wonderland and the new bat at King's Island. But the original turned out to be a disaster plagued with downtime and unfortunately the trains put lots of stress on the track and this coaster just never really was able to operate consistently and always seemed to break down and the issues were just too much as King's Island closed it in 1983 but did replace it with an awesome aero custom looper vortex which operated for 33 seasons in the same plot of lot same plot of land that the OG bat was in. Third 
is Green Lantern, and this coaster operated at Six Flags Magic Mountain from 2011 to 2017, and this is one of the most famous coasters, especially in recent history, that has been claimed to be one of the biggest disasters in roller coaster history, and one of the biggest flops out of all coasters. This Intamin Zaxxon is absolutely terrible, extremely rough, a very mediocre layout, and not nearly as good as the SNS version of the same exact style ride. Number two is Batman and Robin the Chiller. This operated from 1998 through 2007 at Six Flags Great Adventure. And unfortunately, this coaster was plagued with so many issues, plenty of downtime. And it was a really cool 